The Patter family of Max objects provides powerful ways to store, retrieve, communicate with, and control data in your patches. This tutorial will show you how you can make Patter objects quickly and easily work for you. We're going to use Patter objects to add a preset system to this simple Max patch that uses dial objects to set the color of a panel. The whole process takes only a couple of minutes to do and consists of four steps. But before you begin, decide what parts of your patch contain data that you want to include as part of a preset. Let's look at the user interface objects in this example patch. I have three dials and three floating point number boxes that display the outputs of the dial objects. Since these number boxes are only used to display data, what I really want my presets to include will be the positions of each of the three dials. The first step in creating our pattern preset system involves giving each object whose settings we want to save a unique name that pattern objects will use to identify it. To do this, select an object, open the object's inspector, and locate the scripting name attribute. Double-click in the value column and type in the name you want to give your parameter. It's best to choose clear, simple, and unique names. I'm going to call this dial red, for example. You'll need to repeat this step for every object in your patch you want to include as a part of your preset. You may have a number of objects to name, but you'll only have to perform this step once. For the second step, we'll add an object called Patter Storage to our patch. This object lets us store, recall, view, and modify our presets. When you add the Patter Storage object to your patch, you'll need to give your collection of data a name. That name is typed into the Patter Storage object box as an argument. Once again, clear, simple, and unique names are best. I'm going to name this Patter Storage object Colors. The Patter Storage object provides us with a way to find out what objects in our Max patch the Patter Storage object recognizes and knows to include as part of our preset. It's called the Client window. To see the Client window, lock your patch and double click on the Patter Storage object. You'll notice that the client window will display the name of all objects it recognizes, along with other useful information. But our client window is empty, because the patter storage object does not yet recognize any objects in our patch. How can we tell the patter storage object what to look for and include? We'll do just that in our third step, which introduces a new and useful object in the patter family. It's called Auto Patter. As soon as you add an auto patter object to a patch containing a patter storage object, something wonderful happens. All user interface objects in your patch that have a scripting name will automatically be recognized and included in the patter system. Keep an eye on the client window while I add an auto patter object to this patch. The client window now tells me that the three named dials are recognized and ready to be included as part of a patter preset. For the fourth and final step, we'll create a graphic interface to make it easy for us to store and recall our presets, and we'll use the Max preset object. To add a preset object to your patch, create a new object box, type the word preset into it, and hit the return. Remember how we gave our patter storage object a unique identifying name a little earlier? We can use the preset object's inspector to associate our preset with that named patter storage object so that it becomes the interface we use when saving and restoring patter presets. Select the preset object, open its inspector, and locate the patter storage attribute. Double click in the value column and type in the name you gave to the patter storage object. In the case of our patch, that name was Colors. That's it. 
we're now ready to save and restore pattern presets. Whenever you want to save the state of your Max Patches parameters, shift-click on any of the dots in the preset object to store the current values. When you do this, you'll see the dot change color to tell you that there's a preset stored in that location. Let's do that again. To recall a preset, simply click on any dot that represents a stored preset. It's time to save our work. When you save your patch, you'll see a file dialog box appear prompting you to save a file that has the same name as the patter storage object in your Max patch. This is a text file that contains information on the presets you created for your patch. Be sure to save this file in the same location as your original Max patch. If you do that, Max will automatically find and load that file the next time you open your patch and you'll find the presets you've created all ready to use. There are a lot of other things to learn about and do using patter objects. We'll look at some of them in upcoming tutorials. Until then, happy patching!